Hey there guys, once again we are taking a trip into the Happy Hour House of Horror for some Army of Darkness comics this time around. Going to be taking a look at the initial film adaptation originally published as a three-part series by Dark Horse in 1992, later re-released in 2006 as a trade paperback by Dynamite, who many of you know is the main publisher of the vast amount of Army of Darkness comics that exist. This adaptation was written by John Bolton and it was adapted from the original Original screenplay by Sam and Ivan Raimi. I believe he also drew these issues. Now if you've seen the movie, the plot of the book is very much the same. There is little bits of extra stuff, I guess you'd call it exposition or whatever on the sidebars because obviously they can write that shit during the action scenes. That stuff is nice. But outside of a couple of scenes here and there, it really plays out pretty much identical to the movie. Basic gist of the story, for those of you that don't know, is Ash was fighting deadites and shit out in the woods. You know, they accidentally read from this ancient Necronomicon and released fucking demons that were possessing people and shit. And in an effort to send them back to whence they came or whatever the fuck, he reads from the book again, opens a portal, sucks the evil through, but also sucks him through back to like the fucking Dark Ages. He ends up getting nabbed up by these night dudes and chucked into this fucking pit where he has to fight a witch and some zombies. They realize he's like this chosen one from the Necronomicon that's meant to come and rid the world of deadites or whatever. And to do this, he needs to get the book. So he has to set off on this quest to get the book. Being as Ash is a bit of a goofball, he pretty much immediately fucks up, runs right into a tree on horseback, has to take refuge in a windmill, and fight little versions of himself, one of which infiltrates his body and causes him to give birth to an evil twin who he kills and dismembers, buries in the ground before snatching the book up and leaving. Unfortunately, he neglected to recite the magic words properly, and this just unleashes all hell on earth, raising all the dead people up at once, forming an army of darkness that is then going to ruthlessly pursue Ash and the Necronomicon until they get their hands on it. They end up having a battle with the fucking Deadites. Ash ends up fucking killing his evil twin, snagging the book back. And this is where the main difference in this adaptation comes into play because they kept the original ending from the original screenplay intact. And that ending is Ash gets this mystical potion from the wizard dude that will make him sleep for like a century for every drop. So he has to take six drops of it and then he'll wake up in his own time. They fucking barricade him in this cave Jesus style and he goes to sleep. Unfortunately, he wakes up and realizes that he slept way too long and he wakes up in post-apocalyptic England. Pretty neat ending. It's kind of cool that they were thinking of going that way with it, with the movie. And it actually leaves it open for some cool sort of like post-apocalyptic Terminator Mad Max type shit. Who knows what's gone on with the Deadites and all those years, so. It's a pretty interesting way to take it. You know, it's a nice alternative ending. I don't know if I like it better than the ending of the actual movie, but it makes this adaptation unique enough that it's worth having as a companion to the film. Outside of that, the artwork is great. Only issue I really take with the writing is the guy tries to like gripe about rich kids a bunch in the sort of sidebars where Ash is like thinking out loud essentially. None of it really fits Ash's character. I mean maybe one or two jokes about it but they sort of beat that shit to death throughout the course of these three issues and I found that pretty weird. Other than that though his humor is pretty spot on. Presentation is nice. I'm not crazy about the covers but they don't look bad. And overall I think this is a good example of how a movie adaptation should be done. It's similar enough that it feels like you're getting that same flavor from the movie, but it's got enough new elements in it to keep it fresh. The alternate ending is a nice touch. Overall, I would say if you're a fan of these, this is something that's definitely worth picking up and checking out. And honestly, just historically in the Army of Darkness comic book franchise, I think it's important because were it not for this, I don't think that Dynamite would have picked it up down the road and thought, hey, you know, we could do a comic book of this. This adaptation planted the seed and then Dynamite fucking grew that seed into something beautiful. And I think it's really cool that they came back, brought this bitch out the vaults, and republished it for a whole new generation of fans. So rich kid jokes aside, top-notch adaptation right here. Check it out as soon as possible.